cusp fossil relationship um, we need to be noticing here that um, these are cusp marginal ridge and this is cusp fossa. Cusp fossa looks more like cusp tips are in line with each other um, and maxillary and mandibular counterparts. Um, found only 5%. It's ideal but it's not the actual um, occlusion we're going to see on, on many of our patients. Um, they contact at three points which helps minimize tooth wear because it distributes the force. Um, so here are the three points um, for each cusp that is articulating in its respective fossa. So the three points again distribute the force as opposed to having it all at one point which would wear your teeth down much quicker. Um, in this picture we'll go to full view here. Um, you need to notice that um, these blue dots line up with each other. Um, we'll get into the details of, of which one does what, but just a quick overview of the premolars here. Um, we're going to have the functional cusp of the mandibular teeth is going to be the facial, and um, the mesial marginal, mesial cusp ridge here, cusp ridge, not marginal ridge, the mesial cusp ridge of the functioning cusp is going to always articulate with the mesial marginal ridge of the maxillary tooth. So if you see mesial cusp ridge of a functional cusp, it's going to be with the mesial marginal ridge of the opposing tooth. So the functioning cusp on a maxillary is the lingual here, and we see on the distal cusp ridge, it's going to articulate with the distal marginal ridge. Okay, so notice there's no mesial cusp ridge contact here, because that's that would that's just on the lingual side here. That that would contact your um, nothing. <laughs> so on the mandibular functional cusp, you have the mesial cusp ridge that contacts the mesial marginal ridge here. Distal cusp ridge contacting distal marginal ridge. This is our non-functional cusp. It's the facial cusp of the maxillary tooth. The non-functioning cusp has an incline here known as a triangular ridge. The triangular ridge on a non-functioning cusp makes a contact which is known as the guiding incline here that makes a contact with a foa, which is outer aspect of a functional cusp. So functional outer aspect. So a functional cusp has an outer side, the facial side on, in this example, and that contacts a non-functioning cusp on its triangular ridge. And that incline is known as a guiding incline and a non-functioning cusp is known as a guiding cusp. So here we see um, some of the distribution of forces with a cusp fossa. This is an uneven distribution of forces and you'll see a, a rotation or a movement or a tilt of the tooth in the alveolar socket based on this uneven force. Um, and here's an example of even force or well-distributed forces and that distributes the force evenly along the facial, lingual, and apical surface of the tooth. Um, a little bit more of a diagram here. Um, so you need to notice that on this is the maxillary teeth, mesial, uh, mesial fossa on the maxillary teeth is functional whereas the mandibular, the distal fossa is the one that's functional. Um, cusp fossa relationship, you have one premolar to one premolar, so these two teeth, and these two here, contact each other as opposed to cusp marginal ridge. Everything's kind of shifted a little bit so that this first mandibular first premolar, rather than touching just one, shift it mesially slightly, and you find the cusp tip is at the marginal ridges, so it contacts both marginal ridges.
uh, terminology. <clears throat> so let's set the ground here. This is facial. This is lingual on the right. Maxillary, mandibular. Um, anytime a cusp has uh, sits in between two other cusps, so it touches or contacts two other cusps, it is a functional cusp. So on mandibular, the functional cusp is going to be our facial cusp, and on maxillary, our functional cusp is going to be the lingual cusp. Um, Non-functioning cusps then are the cusps that only contact one other cusp. So on maxillary, the facial cusps only touch the facial cusp of the mandibular, and on the mandibular, the lingual cusp here is non-functional because it only touches the lingual cusp of the maxillary. So you can see how this is a functional context two, and this is non-functional because it only contacts one. A supporting cusp, these two here, these are functional cusps. They support the forces of occlusion. So a guiding cusp would then be just a cusp that guides an occlusion. So these are the non-functioning cusps. A guiding incline is the incline from a non-functioning cusp tip down to the central center of the tooth. So it could be a triangular ridge. It could be a cusp ridge with a marginal ridge here depending on if we're talking about cusp fossa or cusp marginal ridge, but in this case, let's just look at the triangular ridge here as the guiding incline. Guiding incline always, always, always contacts a foa, which is functional outer aspect, functional, referring to a function functional tooth, outer, it's on the outer side of the tooth, so outer aspect, functional outer aspect, with guiding incline. You're always going to have two of these sets, which is a non-functioning cusp to a functioning cusp. You got this same situation over here. Functional cusp, non-functional cusp. So this would be a foa, functional cusp, outer aspect. And this down here is going to be our guiding incline because it's on a non-functioning cusp and it's by its triangular ridge. Supporting cusps again are going to be the functioning cusps so you just be able to identify which ones they are on mandibular and which ones they are on maxillary. Linguals on maxillary are functional and supporting, same thing. Facials on mandibulars are functional and supporting and they support what? The forces of occlusion. Non-functioning cusps, also known as guiding cusps. Those are the facial of maxillary, and lingual of mandibular. Those are the cusps not in function, or they only function to guide an occlusion. The inclines on the non-functional cusps from cusp tip towards the center is guiding inclines. You always have two of those. FOAs, you always have two of them, so they correlate with the guiding inclines right here of the guiding cusps, so the triangular ridge of the non-functioning cusp. So here we have a guiding incline, and here is a, a FOA, functional outer aspect. Those two contacts make A on the facial side. Functional cusps on their triangular ridges or cusp ridges in the closed surface here make B contacts. So B contacts are always made by two functioning cusps on their occlusal surface. So triangular ridges, cusp ridges, marginal ridges, etc. C contacts are made by a FOA, which is up on the maxillary side here and the in, uh, guiding incline of the non-functioning cusp or guiding cusp of the mandibular on the lingual side. They make contact C. So A and C are both between 
a functioning cusp and a non-functioning cusp, more specifically a FOA and a guiding incline. B contacts are always between the two functional cusps. So there they are again now. Um, hopefully that has a little bit more of a clearer picture of what we're looking at here. So here are our FOAs, their functional cusps, but they're on the outer side. This is a non-functioning cusp and on the inside. So FOAs always contact guiding inclines of non-functional cusps. So this is our FOA. This is our guiding incline. This is a FOA because it's on a functional cusp, which is the facial cusp of mandibular. FOA always contacts guiding incline of non-functional cusp, which is facial of maxillary. Okay, disclusion. Disclusion, I guess, is the canine to canine tip during protrusion or lateral movements of the jaw. That prevents posterior teeth here from making contact during this motion, puts the forces on the canines, which are the strongest teeth, and it prevents excessive wearing of the posterior teeth. And this excessive wearing, the protection of it, is called attrition. So disclusion, the non-contacts of the posterior teeth during canine-canine, prevent excessive wear, which is called attrition. If you don't have proper attrition, proper protection from canine to canine, you're going to have wearing. Once the canines wear down, the rest of the teeth will follow. And the rest is just lab material that we should have already have finished. If you have questions on those, we can go over them later.